Why it's so important for healthcare professionals to learn about the Holocaust? Okay, we agree that it's history, everybody needs to know the history, but why I was pushing so hard to bring it into nursing? So, most of our stages are being done in, in Jewish hospitals. Every non-Jewish hospital, there are lots of uh, patients which are Jewish. As you, uh, it's uh, Ziv, uh, pointed, the Jewish population is quite big here. And as a result, wherever you are going to go, you are going to be dealing with a Jewish patient or client. And if you don't know their history, if you don't know their, their past and what they went through, you'll have a very hard time to deal with that type of clientele. Our students must understand the past to properly care for their patients in the future. We are very proud of our endeavors to constantly make our programs at SHAD better through partnerships with health care facilities such as the Glenn Super Hospital, the Maimonides Hospitals, and others, to provide better training for our students. Nahama, our teacher, has added another dimension to that training that will prepare our students for the realities of the clients they may serve. Uh, I work in the healthcare sector. The, being a chairman is not my full-time job. And I had worked at Ciel René Cassin. So for those of you in the West, may, may know very well, very high concentration of the Jewish community. And those of you who have lived in Montreal many years, remember the wonderful ice storm that we had many, many years ago. And so we had to be uh, in emergency services. We went into emergency uh, readiness and so on and so forth. And we went into the homes of some of our elderly Jewish clientele in the area, accompanied by fully dressed police officers. Yeah. I can tell you that was the mistake that we should have never made. We had elderly who were disorganized within minutes of seeing us at the door. So while we thought we were helping them, in fact, it took us a couple of days to realize the magnitude of what we were doing and to go back again with police officers that were not dressed in full uniform. The police officers were there to ensure our security because we didn't know whose homes we were going into and what we would find. But certainly, the work that is going to be is being done by your teacher is so important and I hope that you will learn from her experiences and what she will bring to you because when we treat in the healthcare sector, the most important thing is to center it on the client, as you all know. And I think this kind of work that is being done here is paramount in ensuring that we are centering it on the client in order to be able to help them. You cannot help anyone and they will never follow your advice if you don't have that link with them. And to have that link, you have to understand their culture and their backgrounds. So first of all, I have a, a soft spot for nursing schools. Both my grandmothers, my grandmother Kulan and my other grandmother Schiffenbauer, whom I never met, uh, they were both nurses. And uh, nurses are good people. <laughs> uh, in Hebrew, we say achot or ach, which is a bro it actually means sister or brother. Alachmania, which is very difficult to translate, we tried with Nechama, it comes from the word pity. It's basically a person, a good person, who takes care, takes care of you, has pity for you. Uh, and, these are, um, and these are the nurses and the, uh, we say brothers and sisters that we all need. So I do have a soft spot. Also, of course, Holocaust education is, very, is a subject that is very dear to me. I'm a, I'm a son of a Holocaust survivor. And till I reached about your age, I wasn't really interested uh, because we didn't want to hear about it. Why should we hear about it? These are stories from the past that's focused on the future. Uh, we don't want to hear these stories of misery and people suffering and what exactly happened and why my father survived and somebody else didn't. Uh, it was very complicated. My grandfather, my maternal grandfather, uh, he was not a Holocaust survivor. He came to Israel in 1935. Uh, he didn't want to talk about Holocaust either because his whole family of seven brothers and sisters left in Warsaw. They all perished and he didn't want to talk about it. So for example, that looks to you like an ordinary shower, right? Ordinary shower. But for somebody that suffers from dementia or Alzheimer, we're now studying about diseases and Alzheimer, you know, the, the long-term memory is excellent. The short-term memory 
is no good. So a person might remember, uh, you know, what happened 50 years ago, but not what happened a second ago. So we are dealing with a lot of clientele that are suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia, and for them to see a shower, they don't see a shower as you do, but they see this. For them, a shower is a gas chamber. Because the way, one of the ways I would say, the Nazis, uh, I would say, uh, uh, carried the final solution, which was to kill Jews, is to kill them in gas chambers. So they used to tell them, okay, get ready, take off your clothes, we're going to the shower. You're going to the shower. So not only the humiliation of taking off all your clothes, in front of everybody, you're going into what you call the shower, which was a gas chamber. So obviously, nobody came out from the shower alive. But the people that are dead, you know, they don't have more memories to care. But the people that witnesses, the survivors that we're dealing with, that's when the, what they see when they have a shower when you tell them that they need to have a shower. It doesn't mean that the person that went through the Holocaust didn't have a shower all their lives, right? But people who are affected with Alzheimer's and dementia, and they forget everything that's happening now, but the long-term memory is there, that so they see that as a shower. So I want you to see, to try to take somebody to the shower, somebody with Alzheimer's. You are not going to be able to do so because they are fighting for their lives now. They are not going to the gas chamber. I am here to talk to you about the Holocaust. The Holocaust is a unique form of genocide and we should remember that. Why is it unique? Because the evildoers, the Nazis of that period, wanted to eliminate a part of the human race, namely the Jews, no matter where they were. Whereas all other genocides, be it Cambodian or Darfur, they are local. This one was a final solution for the elimination of a part of the human race, the Jews. And what was their guilt? They were born as Jews. However, I want to tell you something else. We are, I am, of a unique generation. We witnessed the Holocaust, and we witnessed the rebirth of the State of Israel. That is unique for a generation, something which did not happen 17 generations prior to ours. So knowing that, we of course think, so how are we going to deal with a patient like that? So no showers? So that's the question. First of all, we need to, to know about the Holocaust, because if you don't know that information, you can't deal with it. If you don't know that what a person thinks, that the shower is a gas chamber, you're going to say, what's the problem? It's easy. Let's go to the shower, right? So first of all, we need to know about the Holocaust to get the education. We need training specifically for healthcare professionals. As you know, the facts, how you're going to deal with it, how we're going to deal with a person that refuses to go to the shower. We need a team approach. Everybody in the team needs to understand that that's the issue and how we're going to solve it. Also, family education. Because I tell you, that person that we wanted to take him to the shower and they see a gas chamber, they are not going to the shower. So we just need to find alternative ways for a shower and to educate the family that are wanting so much their loved one to have a shower, how to do it without bringing back those terrible memories. So based on research, uh, there is a program that called the Relation Center Care Approach, which I'm uh, certified to teach the program. There are not too many people that are certified to teach the program in the province of Quebec. And that automatically is integrated in SHAD. 
because that teaches you how to deal with situation like that. How to deal with situation where our clients hide food in the pillowcase, under the mattress, because they are worried that they are not going to have food. You are going to tell them, oh look, we have so much food here, no problem, no need to hide the food. It's not going to work, because they are going to make sure that the food is going to be there. So our program uh, at CHAD, at the EMSB, is going to teach you, will give you the tools, how to understand the Holocaust, what are, you know, the effect of the Holocaust on our clientele, but also how to deal with it. How to deal with it with a human, in a human way that will lead for, I would say, the best care, best practice uh, in nursing. So talking about Holocaust, this was a very complicated issue within my family. We didn't really want to discuss it. And education for Holocaust, I think, is very important. And it's only when you reach a certain maturity, when you understand the importance of learning, repeating it. Uh, we will not have the Holocaust survivors among us forever. And it's so important. And this is uh, why I'd like to thank you for what you're doing and to thank Mr. and, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hecht for their support. And I'm looking forward to hearing uh, uh, Nechama as she speak. You know, Mont Montreal is a very multicultural place. And you are very uh, culturally uh, sensitive in this city. J'ai appris qu'il faut parler beaucoup de langues ici. Il y a beaucoup de minorités, il y a beaucoup de cultures. C'est quelque chose qui est très important. And you should also know, I'm sure you've mentioned this, and you will mention it, Montreal is the third largest Holocaust, has a third largest Holocaust survivor community in the world after Tel Aviv and New York. So there are a lot of Holocaust survivors here. And as you know, they're getting older, and they will need your help. So it's so important, this connection uh, uh, that you're doing. I uh, was fortunate to have a wife like Riva with whom we, uh, we uh, started this unbelievable program of having teachers in the school system go to the Yad Vashem and come back with the tools to teach the Holocaust. And I'm so happy that we have found a new home here. And what you have been doing is so praiseworthy in trying to continue the teaching of the Holocaust so that history should not repeat itself. And never again, as Elie Wiesel said, should have relevance. <laughs>